Hello there, how you doing? Welcome back to another video on the channel. Today's video is looking back on the Benjamin Mendy case. 11 months ago, I did a video um, stating where we were at and almost a whole year has gone by without really any update. And yesterday, we have got just that. So this is an update on the Mendy situation. Of course, as a disclaimer, what would be said in this video will be seen as quite distressing or will be quite distressing. So if you are involved, a victim, um, know someone in any way involved with the following of, of sexual abuse, um, abuse in general, or of course, R-A-P-E, I can't say the word otherwise, the YouTube may take down this video. Anything of the like, then this is your warning. This will be seen as quite distressing if you have been involved in the like. So yeah um this is the update with benjamin mendy and the reason why i'm speaking the way i am is because it's it, it, it's it's a tough read of course on this channel um I, I like to branch out into more sort of crime related sort of stories such as the guilty sigerson such as the um, quincy promise case mason greenwood of course is a big one and even other conspiracies or different stories before in the past so that's why i'm doing the video today so let's Let's go. So in the last 24 hours, we have received multiple articles by The Mirror, The Guardian, BBC, the like. Because as of Monday, Benjamin Mendy started his official court case, his court trial. And this trial could go on for the next four months, it is to be believed. So that is why this information has come out now and how it's now been made public. So, of course, this has been in the process of the last year. And that is why as we've seen with the likes of Mason Greenwood, these cases can take years and we may actually not ever really come to a conclusion. And as of right now, I, I shouldn't really say it, but people do get confused of why they say the word the Manchester City footballer is that legally he is suspended, but he's still paid because ramifications that, for example, let's say that he's found not guilty, which in many of these cases, seen as very unlikely and uh, just by the sheer evidence that is put up against him that even though he is suspended by Man City, he technically is still an employee at the club and legally um, because for example, if he does come out not guilty, again, unlikely, then the he, he basically can sue back at Man City massively and that could be seen as really, really harmful. Um, of course, no matter how unlikely it does seem, Man City legally can't just terminate it for that reason alone. So people get confused why it says Man City. And of course, Man City, as far as we're aware of the information, they're not at fault. They're not, of course, involved in this. It's just very unfortunate that they have been dragged down into this. Of course, as you can tell by the headline, it's, um, it's rather distressing that there's actually a term of the rooms that is located in his mansion which is called panic rooms and we'll go into that later on and if you aren't aware right now there's 13 um young woman which has accused him of sexual assault and also r.i.p.e as well the manchester city footballer benjamin mendy woman in panic rooms in his isolated mansion from which they believed they could not escape the 28 year old french international defender abused his wealth and fame to lure women back to his gated Cheshire home and them when they either said no or were too drunk to consent. The court heard he met many of the women in Manchester nightclubs, often with the help of his fit sir, Louis Zaha Maturi, age 41, known as Zaha, who is on trial alongside him charged with multiple counts of and sexual assault. The pair are accused of showing callous indifference to the 13 young women they allegedly attacked. The sexual conquest of young women became a game. The case opened up with a prosecutor opening up the world that Mendy was in and how to imagine how these young women can be lured and predated by likes of Mendy and his friends that can open these scenarios where they can be taken advantage of. Dating the time that Mendy was reasonably famous after the recent World Cup 2018 win with, of course, him at the French national team, which created a lure to him of fame. And with that, once they found out he's a footballer, his wealth, and with that becomes power and greed for what you think you can have. And that creates a dynamic inside of his head because of his status that he believes that he is 
above people and can do what he wants and get away with what he wants. Is Fitzer Zaha, which was involved, was one of the main people that went out of his way to find a woman for Mendy that can be easily taken advantage of. In July 2021, Zaha offered to pay a woman to attend a party at Mendy's home with a friend instead of working a shift at a nightclub. The woman later told police Mendy in his cinema room without using a condom. Two of Mendy's associates blocked her friend when she went to look for her. Mendy and Zaha had a joint purpose. These women were disposable. Things to be used for sex, then thrown to one side. Two of the women told police they were passed between both men at Mendy's multi-million pound mansion, where he held pool parties. One was so drunk, she only found out both men had sex with her when one from each was found in her knickers. Five said that they were or sexually assaulted solely by Mendy and six solely by Zaha. The men deny all the 22 charges brought against them. Some of you may ask, how did people not find out? How did these women not record or have any proof of this? How did it take so long for all this information to come out? As recorded, this happened between October 2018 to July 2021. Mendy's house was pretty much in the middle of nowhere. The nearest village is a 50 minute walk. And when women entered the house, they were told that they were not allowed phones in. They were told that this is to protect Mendy's private life and to not have his lifestyle on social media. Could be seen as a way to protect his lifestyle and always partying from his staff and workmates at Manchester City. But more sinisterly, this also was used as a way for the woman to not call for help because they would have no way to. And what I'm going to say next is possibly the most distressing out of this entire case because this is a absolute heinous situation and countless acts that can never be forgiven what the situation is is a deliberate and controlled sequence of events which is created in a way to give the woman involved the least likely chance of coming out of this in any way shape or form protected. What I'm going to say are the panic rooms which was used for some of these acts. Two of the women said Mendy ripped them in rooms they believed to be locked. The jury was shown video footage of a police officer demonstrating the locks on the doors. As Cray explained, they were legitimately used by wealthy individuals. The logic is that if you are likely to be a target for burglars, the locks in effect create a panic room that you can't get in from the outside, but you can open them from the inside if you know what to do. The point is that you have to know how to open them from the inside, and you'll perhaps see how the witnesses might have gotten the impression that they were locked in. Both men knew what they were doing. They were not in some happy state of sexual ignorance about how all this works. They knew very well what they were doing. They turned the pursuit of woman for sex into a game, in effect. And if woman got hurt or distressed, too bad. Make it go away. The prosecutor told the jury the defendants were likely to argue that the woman alleging rape and sexual assault consented to sex willingly, often enthusiastically. That is the update on the Mendy situation. Of course, I'm not going to do a, a follow up on this for a while unless we come to a conclusion of what's happened. You can imagine the scenarios where these women are easily lured in by the lure of money, status, power, you know, being a footballer, you know, that kind of lifestyle. But, but in the majority of these cases, it's not even that. It's women that's just been lied to, expecting one thing and literally getting the worst possible outcome. These girls also can lead to a wide range of ages. The youngest that I've seen is 17. And you would hope that Mendy is an isolated case of footballers using their power, their wealth to take advantage of people. But in the world that we live in nowadays, it's genuinely hard to believe that. I'm not saying that every single footballer has got a dark past anywhere near as this. Of course, 99.9% .9 won't but there will be others that we don't know and that's the most terrifying part. What happens when you give young footballers the world without proper education and a proper dynamic around them to create them into 
well-minded and well-respected men that knows the boundaries of what they are setting. They can have all the money in the world, but they have to have the respect and the the mental strength to own that and to carry that around. But the money and the power in football is increasing year by year, and therefore the more power that these young footballers are gonna get given is only going to increase because football is purely a business. And when you see a young 17, 18, 19 year old kid who's good at football, they will give them hundreds of thousands of pounds to get them into a contract because they are seen as an asset. They are not seen as humans, they are seen as a pure machine to make them money. I hope you guys are well. Tell me your thoughts down below about what you think should be the steps taken in football to try to avoid this. Simply put, it has to be education. It has to be education at a very young level of young men in every walk of life to know what is right and wrong. Hopefully, we can work towards coming to a solution on this. And I hope you guys and girls enjoy your day. Peace out.